Welcome and thanks for attending. I'm Scott, a Chief Architect, and we're here today to talk about floor framing. You may notice my occasional assistant, Maya. Also on today's webinar are a number of Chief Architect staff members to keep an eye on me, as well as to help with your questions. I'm first gonna go through my presentation, which should take about 25 minutes. During this time, you can chat your questions in to our staff. Following the presentation, we'll open it up for your live questions. And you can raise your hand, we'll unmute your microphone, and you'll be able to ask your live questions. You'll find these settings in your GoToWebinar control panel. Our session today will be recorded. We'll be sending a link following the presentation. And then we would also appreciate, we'll have a short survey in there. If you could give us any feedback, we would greatly appreciate it. And with that, let me get ready here and switch over and we'll get started. In this floor framing session, I'm going to cover platform settings for framing, automatic and manual framing, how to add the floor joists, beams, and trusses with mixed framing types and direction. I'm using a floor framing sample plan you can download from our Chief Talk user forum if you'd like to follow along and repeat these same steps. Let's get started. For this session, I'm going to start with a foundation, build the framing, we'll move on, we'll build a second story, and build the floor framing. Before I build the foundation and prepare for the floor framing, first thing you want to do is to check your floor platform defaults because that will define the cavity for your framing. I'm going to go into my defaults and you're going to find an option for floors and rooms and currently for floor level number one, the first floor. What I'm looking for is on the structure panel, the floor information, at the very bottom you're going to find the floor structure information. Currently mine is set at 14 and 3 quarters inch and my default with that is set up to be a fur framing eye joist at 14 inches and then a subfloor at 3 quarters of an inch. You can easily change this information in your defaults depending on what the floor platform thickness is that you want to build. You can also change the structure type in here to the different options that we provide. Now that I know that I'm going to build a 14 inch structural platform, the next step is to build the foundation. Up in my build menu, I'm going to come down to floor, build new foundation. There are several types of foundations that you can build. For this session to build the framing, I am going to use walls and footings. I'm going to come back and visit with hanging your floor platform inside the foundation walls. I'm going to begin with a stacked framing approach. You can come down your stem wall height. I'm just going to accept the defaults that I'm using in this plan. And then the last thing is you're going to notice that I do have a garage room off to the right hand side over here. The garage when it, the foundation when it gets built, will lower that floor six inches from the top of stem wall. There are also settings for the wall types in here. I'm going to use the default 8 inch stem wall that you can see here. The program then will ask you if you want to derive your foundation from your main floor or build a blank foundation. The easiest way for this session will be to derive it from our main first floor. You'll notice when the foundation is built, program automatically moves you down to floor zero. Here's our floor indicator. We're now on floor zero. And let's just use our 3D camera view and take a overview of what we have right now. I'm going to use the perspective floor overview camera. And you can see that our basement has built off to the right hand side where our garage was. The program is intelligent and knows that it is providing the floor for the garage above. The easiest way to create your floor framing in Chief Architect is to use the automated framing tool. You're going to find this tool underneath of our build menu. Specifically underneath framing there's an option to build your framing 
for the foundation. The top option up here is to automatically build both the floor framing and the ceiling framing. You can also build the framing specifically just for the floor. And then below this is the floor structure. We reviewed this just a few minutes ago for the defaults for the floor. You could also use this edit button. It will take you into that same default setting. You can make any adjustments to your floor structure at that time. Now, since I'm going to be making several changes to the framing, I'm going to use the option to turn on the automatic framing so it will update as we make various changes. And then we'll automatically generate our floor framing. Let's kind of rotate around. You can see that the framing is now stacked on the platform. It built the rim joist. It also put in the top or sill plates on top of the foundation. I'm going to go through the steps of placing a beam underneath of the framing in here. To do that, I'm going to return back into our plan view. And notice that my current save plan view is using the floor plan shell. I'm going to specifically use the framing option. Typically, when we ship our template plan, you may have a framing view. I've specifically built one to isolate my framing to just show the floor framing elements. I'm going to toggle on to that view, and you'll now see the framing overlaid on top of our foundation walls. Let's go up into our menu up here, and I'm going to use the floor and ceiling framing tools, and then I'm going to come over and choose the option over here for a floor and ceiling beam. Now let's just come in and draw a beam that will just go across approximately right in this area right here. And if we take a look at this in our 3D view up here, maybe rotate around a little bit, you can see the beam is actually underneath and supporting of those joists. You can set your beams to either be underneath the joists or in line with your joists. You're going to find this in your default settings. Come up underneath the defaults under framing and then over on the panel for your beams you can see the options for your placement of your beams either under the joist or with your joist and that's what controls it you can always click on your beam and move it simply by clicking on it opening it up and you can adjust the height information of this to whatever information you need for your structure now for the next section, I want to go through and build some mixed framing options for the floor. This is using the basic automatic framing, and it does a pretty good job, but most likely you're going to need to customize it. I want to take a look at changing the joist direction on this side of the house. I'm going to assume this is a remodel, and it's an add-on. I'm going to change the joist direction so that it's different in a couple of areas and then I'm going to put some floor trusses in. To do that, I also want to hang the joists. So I'm going to begin the process by simply deleting the framing by coming up underneath my edit menu down to delete objects. In the delete objects dialog, I'm going to come down and I'm going to mark that I'm going to delete maybe just all of the framing. The program, since we have the automatic framing turned on, is going to ask you if you would like to turn it off. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Also the automatic framing for the wall, turn that off. So go ahead and do that and then delete all of the framing in the structure. To hang the floor framing for your foundation, you can either rebuild your foundation and mark the foundation to hang the walls or you can select all of the walls. In this case, I'm just going to select one of them. I'm going to show you where the setting is inside of the wall itself. On the structure panel inside of your wall specification, under the platform intersections, there's the option down here to hang the floor platform above on the wall. This will allow you, if you have a mixed condition of framing, to maybe just select a few of the walls that you need to hang your floor framing on. In this case, I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to rebuild the foundation rather than selecting all the walls and making this change. 
since I don't have much work done in the foundation that makes it an easy process so what I'm going to do is just come up into the build menu again underneath the floor and I'm just going to build the foundation in this case I'm going to check the option to hang the first floor platform in this case and then we'll rebuild the foundation programs going to say do you want to do this you're going to lose your existing foundation we haven't done much work here I'm going to go ahead and click OK and we get the same message about driving it from the main floor you may have noticed when I did that the stem wall grew slightly to support the hung framing condition to rebuild the floor framing back up to the build menu down to framing come down and I'm just going to choose the automatic option to build both the floor and the ceiling framing. When we do this, you're going to notice that the floor framing is now suspended, hung inside of the foundation walls. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of the framing. And I'm going to change the joist direction in some cases. I want the joist direction in the middle of the structure to go up and down. Off to the left hand side, I want it to go in the same parallel direction as well as off to the right hand side. I'm going to begin the process, go back into the floor plan view. I'm going to draw a wall across to this area to begin with. Let's go back into the floor plan view. Then I'm going to use an interior wall tool. Come down here, I'm going to click and drag to create an interior wall. Then for this interior wall, let's go ahead and double click and open it up. One of the things I'm going to do is on the structure panel, I'm going to make this a bearing wall. There's also an option down here to create a footing underneath the wall. Not really relevant for this session, but that option is down there. The other thing is I might change the wall if it's going to be a bearing wall on the wall types, maybe to be an interior six wall. And then let's go ahead and close the wall dialog. Now that I've defined that as a bearing wall, I need to set a joist direction line so I can change the joist directions. So let's go up underneath the build menu and then underneath framing. And what I'm looking for is a joist direction line. With the joist direction, I'm going to come over here and draw the joist direction on the left side of the wall and then on the other side of the wall, I'm going to draw it perpendicular and you're going to notice the framing change. The joist direction line combined with marking that wall as a bearing wall is what allows me to have two different framing directions for the floor. Now the next thing I want to do is come over and place a beam over in this area and we're going to change the framing direction in this area. Let's come up underneath our framing tools and I'm looking for the floor and ceiling beam tool. We'll just come down here and draw a beam across here like this. And then again, back up into the menu underneath framing, and I'm looking for the joist direction. And we'll just drag a joist direction to change the framing direction on the right hand side of that beam. On the left side of the structure, I used a bearing wall to separate the framing. And here, the beam is separating the framing area. Another way you can separate the framing area is to use a bearing line tool. You'll find this underneath the build menu, specifically under framing and a bearing line. If I come in here and I draw a bearing line across the top and then a joist direction perpendicular in this area, update our framing, You'll notice the framing change in this upper section has now been controlled using that bearing line tool combined with the joist direction tool. Let me just press undo here a couple of times. Now for the middle area of the structure, I want to create a set of floor trusses in here. What I'm going to do is delete all of the framing members in between the wall on the left hand side and our beam. And I'm also going to put a couple of beams over in this area to be supportive of this stairwell opening in here. 
before I delete that frame, I'm just going to use a CAD, a temporary CAD point. I'm going to come up here and put a CAD marker in there so I know exactly where that intersection is. And then I'm going to use my selection tool in here and create a selection around all of our framing joists to delete them. To do that, let's come up into our framing tool. I'm going to come over, then I'm going to hold my shift key down, and I'm just going to come in here right in the middle and surround all of those joists, delete them. The automatic framing is on. The program is notifying me that it will be turned off. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Looks like I missed one of them. Go ahead and delete that last one. I've now cleared out all of those floor joists. I'm going to create a copy of this beam. So I'm just going to grab the copy tool and I'm going to slide that over, snap it onto my CAD point. And then I'll use the beam tool, snap onto the CAD point one more time, create a beam across there. I now have the structure to support the stairwell. And then just above the beam tool is a floor truss tool. Draw the first truss, maybe zoom in a little bit, use my temporary dimensions to get that positioned exactly. And I'll go ahead and set that to one foot six. I'm going to use the multiple copy tool. You'll find that down here in the lower edit menu. And then we'll set the multiple copy interval. And I'm going to change that interval from 24 inches typically used for trusses to 16 inches. We'll zoom out a little bit. I'll hover my cursor over that truss. See the cursor change. And then I'm just going to slide those all the way across. Notice how they trim off. And then let's go ahead and zoom in this truss copied right on top of that beam. And I'm just going to pull that over just a little bit so that it's not on top of the beam. Let's go and take a look at it in our 3D view. And you can see that the trusses have come in here just in that section that we've created. If you draw those trusses initially without any framing and then go into the program and use the build framing, the framing will fill in and you can use a mix of both manual framing and automatic framing for your designs and save yourself a little bit of time. The program also provides the option to frame your floors by room or by a group of rooms, which can be useful for a remodel project. Let's take a look at framing by room on this area on the left. I'll begin first by removing the framing members in this area. We'll do that from our floor plan view. Select our floor joist tool. Holding the shift key down, I'll draw a marquee around the joist and then press the delete key. And now to frame this by room, I'm going to do this from the floor above. So we're going to go up to the floor above. I'm going to select the room. And you're going to find a framing option down here to frame for the selected object. Now before I frame this, let's open up the room and let's take a look inside of one of the options for the room. And specifically on the structure panel, down towards the bottom, there is the option to specify a framing group for the rooms. And essentially, if we were to understand what a framing group is, let's go into the help file and just take a look real quickly. Inside of the help file, if we just kind of scroll down until we get to the structure panel, you'll see a diagram in here of the structure panel and the category that I'm looking for is category number four. If we kind of slide down to category number four down in here, and it talks about the information for framing groups. And if you click on this link in here about framing groups, we can learn a little bit more about these. So if we take a look at this definition, when floor framing is automatically generated, the program tries to create a single platform that would span as much of the structure as possible. If you need separate framing areas specifically for a floor such as a remodel you can assign your rooms to a different framing group the default number is typically one if you give it a framing group of two when it builds that framing it will then treat it separately as if it's framed at a different time and creating these framing groups will allow you to separate those framings especially for remodel conditions not that you need to do it for this example but if i were just to increase this by 
1, so it's framing group number 2. If I were to frame the entire structure at the beginning, it would try and frame that as two separate areas. The other thing, as long as we're in here, just above that is to retain the floor and ceiling framing. There are times when you build framing for a certain area of the floor and you go to rebuild it at a later time, you may have modified the framing for that floor, maybe added a second joist underneath a wall, and you want to retain that, you can check this button in here, and then when you have a rebuild of the framing, it will not rebuild that area until you were to uncheck this. So I'm going to just uncheck that box. Now one small visual change you can make, let's go down into the floor structure. One of the things that I like to do sometimes is to visually change the framing information. Currently we're using this fur framing that's 14 inches. If I tap on the texture in here, it's going to be using this fur framing material. I might make a copy of this and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to call it new. And then I'm just going to grab a new color in here. Let's click blend with color and let's just select, I've got a green that I typically use. And now when this frames, let's go ahead and close our dialog and go back. The room is selected. I'm going to come down into my lower edit menu and use this tool to build the framing for the selected object. And then I'm going to go back over into the 3D camera that we have and now you can see the framing information has been updated and since I changed the coloring of it it's a useful way to maybe identify what those framing members are. Could be for your remodel project you might not have framed the rest of the structure and being able to frame by room is an easy way to control your framing. Maybe also a little bit easier if you're doing a materials takeoff. To create a second floor and do the floor framing, very similar steps. Come up into your build menu, down to floor, build new floor. Program will ask you if you want to derive that floor from the main first floor. And then it's going to open up the structure and detail information for that floor. In this case, I'm going to add 12 inches to the floor, make it a 9 foot ceiling. And then in the floor structure down at the very bottom, it's going to use the same floor structure information that you did on the first floor. When you click the edit button, you've got the OSB subfloor at 3 quarter inch, and then you've got your fur framing that's currently in eye joist at 14 inches. Any changes you need to make, you'd make those right in this category right here. And then once you build that floor, it will create the new floor. Let's go back in and take a look. This is the general 3D overview. Let's open up our layer display options. And I'm going to change my camera view from the 3D view to the layer set that just has the framing information for the floor. I made a copy of the main 3D framing set. You can see here is our framing for the main floor and the second floor we've yet to build. So let's go up into our build menu, down to framing. We'll come over to the first floor. Again, the framing is always built on the floor below for the floor above. For the first floor, I'm going to come down and I'm going to build the floor framing for the second floor. Again, it's using that floor structure information at 14 inches. Below, you can set the spacing and width for the joist and define the rim joist width and type. And that will automatically generate the framing for that second floor. You can use the same type of steps to modify this framing on the second floor as you need to, depending on how your structure lays out. And that wraps up this session on floor framing. Remember, you can find this sample plan on our website under the Chief Talk user forum if you'd like to repeat the same steps from this session. Okay, so let's go through and make sure that we get your questions answered. Just go ahead and raise your hand in the GoToWebinar control panel. We'll call on you. When we call on you, make sure you unmute your microphone 
And with that, Carrie, do we have any questions out there? Hey, Scott, we have a question from Vicki Worcester. Hi, Vicki, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Scott. When you clicked an individual wall on the foundation, you were able to uh, indicate whether you wanted it to have a ledger. Can you do that with the automatic framing so that if you're hanging the joists from a ledger, it'll automatically put that ledger everywhere? So if you notice in here, I don't have a ledger, Vicki. Yeah. Now, when, and... you, um, when you were showing us an example of changing one wall at a time, Mm -hmm. You clicked on a wall, right? And when you opened the dialog box, it had something in there about a ledger. Okay, so um, let's take a look here, make sure I understand. Let's open up this wall, and I'm going to come over to this structure panel. Um, yeah. This is include ledger. Right, yeah. Is there a way yeah. to do that automatically? Well, that's a good question. I actually haven't done it automatically, so let's see if that's an option in our build foundation. So let me come in here and see. I don't see that option. Stem wall defaults. Al, are you um, are you online? Are you familiar with that? I haven't seen it as a default. Ah, here we go. So what I've done here, Vicky? Uh huh is I went into Build Foundation. Let me just switch this around just a little bit here. Let's pull up. So I'm into the Build Foundation. And underneath your stem wall, you see the Edit, the Foundation mm -hmm. wall. And we come in to the wall information. And underneath your Foundation wall, you can then mark on this Foundation wall that it has the, uh, the ledger information. So on the structure tab, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So then you can awesome. come in and mark that to have a have a ledger on it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, second question. I noticed that there are automatically hangers hanging the joists to the beam. Can you um, add hangers to a ledger? Um, how did okay, you do so, that? Yeah, so you notice in my view here, right, that I have some hangers off of this I-beam. Those are not an automatic process. You, you do need to manually, manually place those. And if you just grab that, let me just click on this and I'll find it in the library. This is probably going to be coming out of the Simpson Strong Tie Library. So if I just search for that in my library, let's scroll up and make sure that, yeah, so that's coming out of the Simpson Strong Tie Library. And then when you place those, if we go back over into the view here. Uh, let's see here, yeah. You can see that here I placed it and then you do a multiple copy and then you can slide it down. Those aren't, auto those aren't an automatic component that's generated when you build your, your your joists or your or your framing members. Okay. Well, at least it's there. <laughs> it okay, is, and it, it can be helpful if you want to have that level of detail. Thanks for checking in today, Vicki. Sure. No problem, Scott. Scott, we have a question from John. Hi, John. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you again, uh, Scott, for the overview. When mm -hmm. I draw additions, much like what you've done, you've shown the 3D image uh, and changed the color of the joist in 3D. Mm -hmm. right. um, is it possible to change it in 2D? Uh, I always have my new joist darker yeah. uh, and I fill them in and I give them a heavier line, you know, much like you've got a darker beam there now, but I don't like, I, right now I'm selecting them all individually and then changing them and separating them from new joist to existing joist. But I was wondering if there's an automated feature of when you're adding a room, like you just click one room to do joists, can you now make a two-dimensional um, difference in the two-dimensional drawing? Right. And kind of, um, let me just cancel that. I don't like what I've done here with the 3D view where I have it in green, right? Absolutely. And on the plan view side, I don't have any designation of it 
one way you could do it, it, I don't have an automated way to do it by room, John, if you want to change the fill information on these joists. Yes. Um, you can set up the default settings. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the way you could just group select all of those, right? right. We could make sure that we're going to select all of those. So I just did that marquee select. And then you open them up clearly, and then if you wanted to do a fill style in here, yes, and we just that put something simple in there, right? So then you can do it that way. The when you build your framing, you can go into your default settings underneath the framing, and for your where is it plan display, you can come in here and put a fill style in. And we just pick a color in here that's something different. Uh, well, let's set it so that you can tell. We'll use one of these green colors. The One of the challenges with doing it this way, John, would be it's actually going to be controlled for all of your framing. So any framing that you do in this case would have the properties you put in the default. Now, when I frame that room, separately if you're just framing a room separately if we come up yeah. let's go up then you could do it you can also mark the other rooms to retain your framing and then that will um, retain it and not build the framing so that may oh. be a way that you could quickly change yeah. the color of the framing as long as you're not doing other framing yes. for it does that oh. does that help yeah so you would change the default after you framed up the existing, you change right default and then select room by room, uh, yep. frame, and then it would have the correct one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, that's that's what I was looking for, and I appreciate. It. Go ahead. Uh, uh, there's another selection method here, and that's just to draw a line and select the line and choose the fence tool. Okay, so you don't sure. have to draw the the, uh, the the polyline box. You don't have to draw the marquee. So you're saying just draw a line here. Yep. Click on the line. There'll be an option. If you click on it, there'll be an option to make a fence. It'll select anything that crosses the line. Mm -hmm. oh, and then it's a line it. fence tool. I like that. I forgot about that one. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Matt, we have a question from John Paul. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, yeah, it's about the joist arrow tool. Um, yeah. Right now, you're running parallel to the joist when it draws. Is there any way to run it perpendicular? Because kind of the historic graphic standard for that tool should be that you're running the arrows for the uh, rollout direction, not the joist direction. I know it seems like a small thing, but it's one of those things where we could use that note, for instance, um, as the note for the plans. Right now, we have to just turn that off and then draw our own custom note. So John, just so I understand your question here, um, you you want this joist direction to be formatted differently? It, yeah, the graphic standard, traditional graphic standard for that should be run, the arrows run the direction of the of the rollout, the joist rollout, not the direction of the joist themselves. So you can find I that see. on any typical mm -hmm. floor uh, framing plan. So. It's interesting because right. uh, if we don't show the joist and let's say we just have that arrow, it does confuse people. Yeah, they're, sure. They're used to seeing it the other direction. So I didn't know okay. if there's a way to show it the other direction or not. Um, yeah, so uh, I, as you probably know, John, um, this is actually what forces those joists to build yeah. in, in this parallel manner. And if you're doing your your details for your floor framing, then you would probably need to um, go in and, and draw your joist directions using a CAD tool, CAD okay. line. Okay. And, um, but I think your request would be is, could we make that so that it'd be more usable and you wouldn't have to use CAD or separate text item to show the direction of those joists? Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, kind of like yeah. what you have now. I mean, we, we run it straight perpendicular, but yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Scott, we have Russell here with a question. Hey, Russell, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Carrie. Thank you. Uh, nice job, Scott. Really good things here, particularly on that fence selection. 
I wanted to throw out uh, the other selection method, which is to select similar objects down in your edit object toolbar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the things I strive for in my plans is what that gentleman uh, was referring to earlier. You know, if you can do a nice, nice job of changing colors to highlight addition areas. So a lot of times what I do is I'll select one joist and then use my select similar objects and just draw the marquee and then I can change them all at once. Right. right. But I like the fence idea too. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, Russ. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one other thing that uh, people might want to consider is uh, setting up their layer tables and having existing joists with a different line style. You can use a dashed or a dotted line to indicate a uh, existing condition, and then the solid line is the new one. Right. So what you're suggesting is we could grab these joists in here, those trusses, open them up, maybe put them on a different line style, floor framing trusses, and we could call them something like, uh, make a copy of this, call it remodel. change the color just to be safe in here we'll just pick a color that's visible not that you'd use this in your plans and then the line style here maybe a dash line style and then that's going to look differently for your remodel project as as built versus new construction we have a question from kareem kareem go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question hey, good afternoon the sales uh it defaults when you do automatic framing it defaults to i think five inches by inch and a half here we use it at um use a four by four cell uh is there any way that i could get the cell to have a default so when it auto builds it, it you know it's four by four as opposed to you know the five and a half by an inch and a half uh, Kareem, are you talking about the uh, sill plate that is yes. currently the darker brown? Okay. Yes. And you'd like to have that to be a wider sill plate? Yes. Yeah. A, a four, let's, um, four, a four by four, yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look and see if we can see where that setting is. So let me come into the foundation. And Al, do you know where that's located at? Foundation wall defaults. Okay, so let's go into our defaults. Let's go to our walls. Let's look at our foundation wall and let's take a peek. We're in the foundation Bottom. wall. Sill plate. Ah, perfect. Thanks, Al. Okay, Cream, do you see at the bottom down here? Yeah. Whatever value you want to type in for your sill plate for that foundation wall that you're using is where oh, you wow. can define where you can define that. So remember when you when you build your foundation, right? When you go in and you're building your foundation, make sure your default wall that you're using, um, in this case, I'm just using a basic eight inch stem wall. Make sure that you have selected that and that setting for your sill is adjusted down here. Okay. Um, another question though. Yeah. Uh, uh... I noticed on your picture, you know, you didn't have a solid foundation. You had like some columns, and then you okay. had the framing framed up over the columns. Could some beams. Please... Yeah, it's, it's an image. You had an image up, not not in chief, an image up. An image, okay. This one. This one, yes. So the the, the portion that's over the, those columns. Mm -hmm. how, how do you get it to frame that without having a, a foundation? Mm -hmm. So in this case, this is a deck and the deck room, when you frame your deck room, you would mm -hmm. specify, you know, it's a deck room and that's why you get it treated lumber in this area down mm -hmm. in here, right? And then that put in a rim joist and I simply changed that rim joist to be a glue lamb, a cedar glue lamb and changed the thickness of it. Okay. And one more question, because I lost connection while you were explaining about getting the members um, all hatched. I, did, I missed that part about getting them hatched, as well as when I build my, my flooring, uh, I normally have 
use joist hangers. So you you, you know I use joist hangers to put on the sill. So the raft the floor joist butts up to the sill, and I use joist hangers. Um, Something like this. Yeah, yeah, no. just like that. But you know, up to the sill. Um, it kills me all the time just to get that done because you know the repetitive nature of you know having to do each one individually. Mm -hmm. You know, but you explain I could do just do a copy. Sure. Uh, sure. But if I wanted, let's say, the joist to let's say lap over on the sill at least, um, like notch notch it at least. Mm -hmm. so let's say we have a six inch joist mm -hmm. going over the four inch sill. We'd have like two inches on top of the sill and four inches along the the depth of the sill. Okay. Mm -hmm. how, how could I get that, that done? Well, basically, um, once you build your framing, and if I understand it correctly, let me switch my view here so it's a little easier to see with a vector view. Once you have your framing in place and you kind of use the program to automatically do it, you could take this, let's just peek, pick on one of these framing members in here. You could take this, let's slide it over just a little bit. Let's take him and just, we're just pulling back in a little bit. I could actually raise this up. Um, let's just open it up and let's raise it up. You said about six inches. So it, it if, yeah. So it does come about two inches above. Yeah. Just about two, two inches above. Yeah. So I'm going to lock the depth. This is a 14 inch eye joist. And then I'm going to take and raise it up so you said plus two inches plus two move it up two inches okay and oh. you know it, what one of the things that we have coming in here is um i'm using chief architect x13 if you don't want to see this this joist being um because you probably trim it off uh, even though that's yeah. an ip coming into a solid area in here if you wanted to notch that right mm -hmm. and actually show it we could put a profile on there and you could assign a profile to that and then have it notched you, can you show me how to do that? <laughs> okay uh well i haven't done it but let's take a look um so let's take this guy and let's come in to the profile and so what I'm doing in here is putting a profile. You could think of this as kind of like a rafter tail or something like that. So let's go out, let's add new. Let's browse out, see if I can find anything that might be similar to this. I wonder if I have the rafter tails loaded here. If not, we'd have to make one. Let's find our rafter tails, see if there's anything close. All right, well, without drawing my own profile real quickly, let's assume that this is a square profile. To save myself a little bit of time, um, I'm just gonna put that on both ends and then I'm gonna trim it off. Now, that's not the exact profile you want because you want one that's more of an L shape, right? Yes. But easy very easy to draw one of those and then you could assign it on to your framing member and chop it off kind of like i just did there perfect <laughs> so so that's a that's a feature that would be coming that's that profile is not available to general framing members that's a new feature that we would have coming oh. out in chief architect x13 sometime towards the latter part of the first quarter of next year okay thank you so much you bet. Thanks for calling in. Scott, we have a question from Ken. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Going back to your um, to the questions about existing versus new, mm -hmm. um, this, the way I've dealt with it is to create, and particularly with remodeling, creating, um, well, I have a layer called existing conditions to remain or something to that, to that effect which I then lock once I've got the existing conditions fixed. And then I have another layer for new or, or remodel. And I do it for floors and for uh, um, walls and so forth. I'm not sure if you would agree with that, that uh, technique, but it certainly has worked for me. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of layers. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, that's one of the challenges is 
you you want to do a nice job of maybe showing it and showing your client what how that remodel is going to interact with the new construction and if it's important to you you know separating those out making them clean with layers and or layer sets is is a great way to do it but you do have to manage many or more than one layer for your joists or your rafters or your wall framing and and windows and doors and those things but a lot of people do it that way for sure okay. thank you i, I just thought yeah. i'd share it in case of oh yeah thanks for uh thanks for sharing um that's a that that is a common technique so yeah, i'm glad to hear it's working well for you yeah. thanks ken scott we have a question from matt moyer hi matt go ahead and ask your question hi i was just wondering how you would go about making a reverse brick ledge on your foundation wall there for your joists to sit on. Oh, a ledger? Um, a ledge uh, rather than a ledger where you hang it. Oh, a ledge. Uh, a ledge where you actually sit, the joists actually sit on. So you're like notching a foot or so out of the foundation wall where the joists actually rest on. Right. Um, let's see if we can figure that out with one of these walls. So you'd like to see this wall basically have a notch so that floor truss is going to sit on top mm -hmm. of it a couple inches or three inches yeah. whatever it is correct so do we have any chief staff members that have done this recently and know the uh, the quick steps to do it Scott, the only way i've ever done it is to make it a pony wall mm -hmm. so that one of the foundation walls is thinner than the other and set it to be the depth of the framing okay that sounds like a pretty good idea mm -hmm. So let's take that wall and what Kayla had offered there is underneath our wall types, we might make this a pony wall and the lower wall type would be the thicker wall, okay? Or the skinnier wall, whichever one you're trying to do. You said reverse brick ledge? Like a reverse brick ledge, yeah. So you have like a basically huh. a four by 12 chunk or so taken out of it on the inside there where the joist would be sitting on. Right, so let's leave the bottom wall at eight inches and then let's take the upper wall and I'm gonna make it the eight inch concrete wall, but I need to make that maybe two inches thinner. So I'm gonna make a copy of it and we'll just call it the six inch wall. See if this does it, something yeah, like that. That's good. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. And then you can set the depth of that of those mm -hmm. wall types, right? Correct. So minus, I think that was a 14 inch joist. So there you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. You bet. Matt, we have a question from Russell. Hey, Russell, did you have another question? Uh, yeah, building on that uh, that inside or reverse brick shelf that you just did. If you look right there in the view, you've got your steel beam that obviously is going to rest on your foundation. Uh, I come across this quite a bit uh, with regular tripled up two by 12 floor girders where we cast a beam pocket into the concrete wall. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Is what I'm doing now is on my foundation plan, I'm just showing a, a CAD box and I fill it black and I put a note. And then, you know, for the visual, I run the beam six inches into the 10 inch wall, but it looks as you just showed your, your eye beam there, you know? I mean, it's okay, but I'm just curious. Well, and Phil, it, I think this is probably one of the best solutions you can do. It would be difficult to carve that wall out. You could yeah. maybe figure out how to use a wall niche, but on an intersection area like that with two walls coming in, I think probably a text call out would be a good yeah. approach for that. Yeah. Uh, Al, would you add anything to that? No, that's typically what I do too. If you uh, do drag the, drag the beam into the foundation wall, does that do anything? Well, well it just kind of disappears. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna compete with it because it's at the same intersection, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 Here, another quick question, if I may. You're showing a pressure treated sill plate. We typically use a double two by six sill assembly out here. Okay. The bottom of which is a pressure treated two by six, and then the upper one is a KD two by six. Okay. 
any way to save me some time and and spec one is PT and the other is KD? That's asking a lot, I know, but I figured I'd ask it some here. Um, I don't know the answer to that in our newest version coming out. I suspect the answer is we don't have an automated way of doing that, Phil. Um, oftentimes when you're building your sill plate, it may even build with a regular fur stud and you got to spray it with a pressure treat. And then when you do your walls, you could take that bottom component that attaches to that and spray it with the, uh, the other, the other yeah. material to show it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Just, just curious, not a big issue. Yeah. Thank you. No, but thanks. Thanks for the question. Yep. Yeah. We have a question from Jan. Hi, Jan, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Great. I'm, I'm glad I heard the last comment about the sill plate. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I missed it, but is there a way to automate the material color to be the pressure treated material or do you have to spray it? Let's see in our foundation wall here if that setting is in there I, for the I sill. Yeah, I don't see it in here. I'll pause here for a minute and see if any of the uh, chief staff members know if there's an, a specific way that we could automatically make sure that that's a pressure treated material when you build uh, when yeah. you build your foundation. So my second question, as long as you got the framing defaults open and you encouraged me to make a change to the framing defaults, uh, one of the things I'd forgotten about that uh, I want to change is the opening headers you know because you have a lot of options in the framing dialog box for span width uh, and the depth of the member but um, there is no option I can see for having that a one by members having a uh, four by member is is that possible in the framing dialog box there can we do a, like a four by ten or four by twelve instead of having those two uh, members generate, because they always seem to be generated, not necessarily together, but on opposite ends, um, you know, outside and inside. So this is res with respect to openings, right? When you're building your wall? Yeah, windows, doors, uh, any opening mm -hmm. in the wall. Well, in your, have you looked in the opening defaults in here for framing? And we're actually gonna be talking about wall framing next week underneath the framing information, you can come in here and specify for your defaults for your for your windows. And uh, so you can control that information through your doors, your windows, okay. how you want it framed. That's, that's the cool. other one, the other one you can think of, John, is a span table. So the span table is just kind of a generic thing. And then if you want to control that through your windows and doors separately, then you can also control it. Notice that my default is a two by 10 in here. Um, no matter what size the window is, that's my default setting. And then if I'm gonna put in a larger window or a larger door, then I'll probably go in and change that based on that component, Put make it a two by 12 or an I-beam or whatever that is. Now is the, uh, you have one by members, when you select a three and a half inch wide member on a two by six wall, where is it putting the uh, four by? Is it on the outside base or is it on the inside? Oh, there. Placement, flush against the exterior. Well, you can control it a little bit. You can make them evenly spaced. If we said we wanted a count of one, then you can, uh, again, I've got X13 open here. So oh. we've got some added functionality. And again, I don't wanna get too much into next week's presentation. But these are all settings if you wanted to control whether it's going to be on the inside or the outside. That's those, it. Those kinds of things. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So I'll look forward to that. Yeah. Make sure you sign up for next week. It's wall framing. We've done a lot of interesting things with wall framing going forward. Give you a lot more functionality for that. Scott, um, it looks like you've gotten to all the framing questions, but we do have an unrelated question if you're open to that. Okay. Hello, Scott. 
This question has to do with windows, and I know it's not foundation related. Maybe it'll be better for next week, but I'm working on a design where I've got windows in a wall that has a brick veneer. And there is a plywood panel above the window and below the window that basically takes the place of the brick. And is there a way that I can detail that without having to, with the, with the way I've been trying to do it, and it just does, it's very cumbersome, is to change wall types right where the window occurs. And it gets really messy. Um, well, without seeing it, Jeff, have you tried the uh, the wall material region? No, I, I, I'm not really familiar with that, but. If you take an elevation view and you okay. use the wall material region, you uh, can actually control that and cut things. Let's see if, I don't know if I have an upper floor here. Yeah, I guess I do. So if we just take an elevation view of this structure that I have, and let's just zoom in on part of it. There, underneath your build menu, you can come down to the wall, and it's called wall material region. Got it. And then we just kind of click and drag on this wall. Yeah. This this is a component on there. You can open this up. You can indicate that it's going to cut the material or be on the outside of it, and then you can specify the layers of it. So if you wanted it to be plywood or whatever you want in here. This apparently has three different layers, and you can kind of do whatever you want with it and adjust it, move it around, shape it however you want. All right. Beautiful. I've been using this program for probably seven or eight years, and I've never used this that feature. So there's there's a mating one, there's a floor material region as well. So a lot of people use that for maybe an inset in an entryway, if they're doing some elaborate design, then that will also be something, or a deck, you know, you could use this as an inset. A lot of people are doing designs in their deck. So that's a wall material region. Got it, thank you very much. That solves my problem. You bet. We have one last question from Robert. Go ahead and okay. unmute yourself and ask your question, Robert. Hi, Scott. When I'm doing a walkout basement, I'm trying to replace the four inch concrete floor with a floor truss. Okay, underneath. So you got a walkout basement and you got a floor truss like this underneath of it? Right, so instead of having the concrete floor, we're trying to put in the wood truss floor with a crawl space underneath. Oh, okay, and sure. I can't so, seem to get that to work on the sections. Okay. So it it would it be fair that it would look like the center of this image right here? Yes. Okay. But but it, instead of being on the main floor, it would now mm -hmm. be in the lower level. Sure. Well, in in this case, if we just take a look at what this plan looks like, let's make sure I have the same plan open. Let me get back to it. So you can see in this view here. Um, this is the same image we were looking at if we take our 3D view here. If we go back over into that floor plan and we just kind of click inside this room, let's double click and open it up, and I come down to the structure panel. Um, my default floor structure, you can see it's four inches. Right. right. And then when I built my foundation, you can see that what I've done here is the stem wall. Let's zoom in so you can see this a little bit. You can see here's my stem wall, and I don't probably have this set up exactly right, but basically what you're going to want to do is set up your floor structure to be four inches, and then you might even go into the detail down here and add in those different layers. You could insert below. So if you said, below the four inches you had, let's pick a number, 14 inch or so joist, and we could just put in structure in here for framing. And then it would be more accurate probably in that diagram, push it down a little bit, but then you're gonna get that information and then we just take, well, I don't have a floor finish on there at all, zero. Then, so then you can make the adjustments in there and set it up so that it looks something like that. And then 
if you're going to lower the four inch concrete into the basement, then you could, you know, lower that and suspend that as part of your floor structure. Yeah, I've tried to lower that floor down and, and it won't work. It keeps mm -hmm. disappearing on me. It keeps disappearing on you. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, one thing you might look at in your floor plan, if you just click in here, and when I built my floor, I hung it, but you can come down here and this diagram over here is going to kind of tell you what it is. And it, you know, takes a little bit just to understand. But right now that floor with respect to the absolute elevation is 29 inches below the, the floor above. And you can adjust this with, you know, any dimension you want. And if you were trying to move that down four inches, make that, let's just make it 34. You know, it's going to pull your stem wall down. You, you've got to, you know, do a little bit of man, manipulation with it. One thing you could do is send that into our support center. They might point you in the right direction, or we also do one-on-one -on -one training and get you pointed in the right direction. Okay. But I would mess with lowering that floor around. Remember when I, I marked my walls to hang the floor joist. So on the structure panel, I'm marking it to hang it. So make sure that if that's your condition that you're doing, that you hang it and then lower it the amount of your floor joist or your floor truss and the amount of your floor platform or your, your four inch concrete. Yeah, I think like we've tried so many different ways to do it and it just, I don't know why it won't work. If I suspend that floor where it's not touching the wall, say it's six feet away or eight feet away from both walls, I've got the floor joist there. As soon as I try to bring it right flush with the inside of that uh, exterior wall, that's when that floor truss disappears every time. Okay. Well, I I'm not sure how to how to solve that right now on the on the session, but if you want to send it in, we could look at it. Or again, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one training, we can do that with you. Okay, great, thanks. Carrie, are there any more questions out there? It looks like you've answered everyone's question. Did you have any announcements you wanted to make? Yeah, so thanks everybody for attending. Hopefully you had a few takeaways. We'll be sending out a survey and recording tomorrow and take a moment to fill out that survey if you would. And then next week, if you come down to our webpage and you look at our live webinars for training, one of the things that we do have going on next week is we have an intermediate virtual training class going on. So that starts next on November 11th, so next Wednesday. And if you, you notice we have that on sale, by the way. Also, as kind of an extra bonus here, if you've attended today's session, you wanna call in, we'll give you an extra 10% off as a, an added bonus there. So that's next Wednesday if you wanna take advantage of it. Same time, same place next week, we're gonna be working on our framing for the roofs. And we're gonna be talking about some new things that are coming up. I may have mentioned earlier, we're gonna do wall framing next week. It's actually roof framing is next week. Following that on Friday the 13th, don't let that scare you off. We're doing our chief boot camp. If you're new or feel like you'd like a little bit more information on some of the basics of the program, Boot camp's a great session. Some of you may have been new today, and we jumped right into a pretty detailed subject of floor framing. The boot camp gives you a pretty broad view. That's a free session, and it will start at 10 o'clock next week. And then the following week, we are going to be doing wall framing. Lots of exciting things that are coming up with Chief Architect X13, and we'll be happy to show that off. And then we're also doing another training of intermediate, introductory, and kitchens and baths that would be coming up beginning the latter part of January and the first part of February. So thanks everybody for attending today. Hopefully we will see you back on one of our training sessions coming soon and have a wonderful day and we'll see you later.